So, and thank you very much for inviting me to the conference and uh, giving me the opportunity to, to talk about our research. So today I would like to introduce a very fantastic world. It's uh, the world of the insect brain. So maybe many people don't know well about the insect brain. So I hope you will enjoy the world of the insect brain today. So you know the insects are just a little creatures. Huh? However, so they will become an excellent model for understanding the neural basis of behaviors and its adaptation of environmental conditions. So now, so variety of animal species are living on the earth and they show the diversity of sophisticated behaviors adapted, adapted to their environments they live in. And the adaptability is a key feature of animals. So, and it is uh, estimated more than several millions of species exist on the earth at present. So, and among those species, so insects are the most diverse and uh, abundant animal group and surprisingly more than 70% of all known animal species are occupied by insects. So as you know the insects reside almost everywhere in the, in the world and they show the diversity of, uh, they show the uh, variety of behavior repertoires adapt to their environment they live in. Okay. So now, so such an environmental information is changing moment to moment. So insects detect the complex environmental information uh, such as odor, wind, uh, sound, taste, and light uh, using the sensor systems, uh, for example, the antennae for olfaction, uh, compound eyes for vision, and they quickly show uh, adequate behaviors. Uh, such a sensory information is processed uh, by a minute nervous system, so which we also call uh, microbrain, so especially in Japan. So as you know, the basic structure and the function of the uh, component elements of the, of the brain, the neurons are conserved and similar among species. However, the number of the constituent neurons uh, varies heavily among species. Uh, for example, the human brain contains uh, enormous uh, enormous 10 to the 11th neurons. Uh, compared to the figure, insect contains only a 10 to the 4th to the 5th the neurons. So, and there are many uniquely identifiable neurons are contained in the insect brain. Okay, so now, so the insect have evolved over hundreds of, hundreds of millions of years to a suitable form for the small size through natural selection. So now let me briefly summarize the basic system for generating an adaptive behavior in insects. So adaptive behavior is generated by the interaction between the brain, body, and the environment. So insect behaviors uh, generally involve uh, reflex and the program behaviors. So these behaviors are rigid or pre-programmed. So this is because of the consequence of the small number of the neurons. So however, so by interaction with the environment, uh, the insect can show a variety of behavior patterns. Uh, this uh, basic system, programmed uh, behaviors, are affected by the internal state of the brain, so which is affected, which is affected by the factors, uh, for example, circadian rhythm, uh, memory and learning, and multimodal sensory integrations. And also the sensory feedback generated by movement is also very important for compensating behaviors. So insect has the capability of compensating for the discrepancy between the motor commands and the sensory feedback, so including the unexpected sensory feedback. Uh, such uh, compensation for the discrepancy between the motor commands and unexpected sensory feedback can be experimentally studied. Uh, for this purpose, we have developed uh, such an insect-controlled robot. Uh, silk moss is tethered uh, to the robot, so that the, and the silk moss works on the ball uh, air cushion sphere, and the rotation of the of the of, of the sphere is measured uh, using uh, using using optical uh, optical sensors. So then, the output of the optical sensors uh, control two DC motors steering the the output. So as the pilot of this robot, we use a silk moss, so which shows a remarkable pheromone order source orientation behavior. So then we tested the behavior in a wind tunnel conditions. So then the silk moss, uh, the robot, uh, showed us such behaviors and could orient toward the other source. And the pheromone source orientation behavior uh, was 
reliably, uh, uh, reliably replicated by, the, by this hybrid robot. So when we use uh, such a hybrid system, insect uh, control robot, so we can control the robot extension uh, to modify sensory feedback to generate unexpected sensory feedback to the insect. So for, for, uh, in this case, uh, we, manipulate, we manipulate the motor gains asymmetrically uh, four times uh, four times larger than the other side. So under this condition, even the silk mode shows a straight line working. A straight working, the robot turned to the biased direction. So then it's so very easy, so we can give uh, unexpected, in, in, in this case, visual feedback to the insect. So we prepare two uh, conditions. One of the modes uh, which can access to the uh, optical information, the other ones can't. So we tested the behavior of this uh, hybrid system in wind conditions. So then the, the moths, uh, which can access to the optic flow, uh, could comp compensate the course and orient it toward the other source, but others could not. So this, uh, this result indicates that silk moths have the capability of course compensation for unexpected uh, sensory feedback, here the visual feedback during the other source uh, orientation. So thus the insects are capable of generating adaptive behavior by modification and compensation uh, of the basic system uh, that derive uh, reflexes and program behaviors. So in order to understand the basic neural system, uh, neural system of these uh, adaptive behaviors, so we have taken two different approaches. In the first approach, so we have uh, characterized morphology and the physiology of brain neurons comprehensively. So then all the information have been registered uh, to a neuron database. So then, okay, so using th this data, we reconstruct the uh, net, uh, neural network, so they make models. Uh, the model is implemented to a small mobile robot uh, for evaluate uh, networks, uh, network models. So we call this approach analysis and synthesis approach, however. So this approach is a bottom-up approach, so it is not so easy to understand the complete function of the brain. So we need another complementary approach. So we, for this purpose, we have developed the insect machine hybrid system. So here we control the robot uh, using, uh, using, the, uh, using the insect uh, through its behavior, so uh, the neural activities recorded from the brain. So this, uh, uh, this, so this, uh, 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 this hybrid system will contribute to understanding the uh, neural basis of the behaviors systematically. And these are two approaches are uh, complementary. So today, so I would like to introduce these two approaches, uh, focused on the older source orientation behavior of the silk moss. So now the silk moss is a very cute animal, maybe, I think you, you think so. So anyway, so these guys uh, show a remarkable pheromone source orientation behaviors in response to the pheromones released by the female. Okay, so they show the zigzagging working and orient toward the other source with the wing vibration, the head sideways movement. And two components of the pheromone are identified. The major component is called the bombicol, and the minor component is the bombicol. And the synthetic primary component of the pheromone, the bombicol, is sufficient to drive the complete behavior. Okay, so the, the male silk moths are usually so quiet. They don't show any behavior without pheromone. But once the female is displayed to the males, so quickly they show uh, such behaviors, so then orient toward the other source, the females. So this is the only behavior of the silk moss, male silk moss in his life. Okay? <laughs> so now, so this slide shows the order distribution. So in airflow conditions are stimulated by smoke. So shown in this uh, picture, the orders do not exist continuously, but as patchy intermittent plume. plume. Uh, so, and the distribution status of the odorant is so complex, and it is changing moment to moment under wind conditions. So therefore, the chemical plume tracking uh, is a highly difficult problem to solve uh, by conventional approaches. So however, as you know, the insects succeed in orienting toward the other source, so if, even if the source is a few kilometers away. Uh, so the order source uh, orientation uh, behavior will become an excellent model for understanding the adaptability 
of, uh, of, of the adaptability of the animals in biological systems. So now, so making a long story too short, I'm going to summarize here the strategies, behavior strategies for order source orientation behavior in the silk moss. The orders exist as a patchy intermittent plume. So in response to pulsed pheromonal simulation, uh, the silk moss uh, shows uh, such a sequential program behaviors uh, consisting of the surge, uh, it's uh, the straight line working, and uh, zigzag working followed by a looping. A looping is a turns of more than 360 degrees. Upon the simulation, the moss shows a straight line working. And after the offset of the simulation, the silk moss shows a zigzag turns and looping behavior. And the interval time of, the, of this zigzag turns increases time by time significantly. And this sequence of the behavior is reset every time the reset and restart from the beginning, every time the most received the pulse pheromonal simulation. So therefore, with increasing the simulation frequency, uh, the, the, the path of the silk moss uh, becomes straight, straighter toward the order source by repeating the straight line working, uh, such a phase, okay? By contrast with decreasing the simulation frequency, uh, the, the, most, the path of the silk moss becomes much more complicated combination of zigzag turns and looping behaviors. So this slide uh, shows uh, the tracks of uh, free walking mammals in a wind tunnel uh, with a range of olfactory simulation frequencies. Uh, with increasing the simulation frequency, that the path becomes straighter toward the other source. So that's a male silk moss oriented toward the other source by repeating the set and reset of the program sequence of the behaviors. So this is a very important point, depending on the uh, special temporal distribution status of the odorant in the air. The other words, the interaction between the insect and uh, environment is very, very important for the source orientation. So now let's move to the neural mechanism of this behavior. So first I would like to introduce you uh, the general features of the insect nervous system. Uh, maybe, of course you know the insect body consists of the head, thorax, and abdomen. So each segment has its ganglia. And the ganglia in the head is called brain. And uh, in, the thrax, in, the thrax, in the thrax, it is called the thoracic ganglion and the abdominal ganglions. And, uh, and, uh, and the brain, so, uh, brain uh, serves as an integration center of the multimodal sensory information. And it selects uh, behavior, so then generate the command, uh, motor commands, so which descend from the brain to the thoracic motor system to drive uh, uh, such a zigzagging patterns, okay, or sophisticated behaviors. So, in, in contrast, the thoracic ganglion has a, a com complete uh, basic system for generating a wing motion patterns and sit leg walking. So I remove the head and also remove the abdomen from the thorax. Okay? So then even such a, just a thorax is there, shows a normal wing vibration. Okay? They can lie for one week. Okay? So, so, but you know, they show only a straightforward wing motion patterns or walking patterns. So that means that uh, when the silk moss shows a zigzag turns, uh, command signals should be generated in the brain and descend from the brain to the thoracic motor systems. Okay, so now, so this slide shows a hierarchy, uh, hierarchical architecture, so in the insect brain. So many identified neurons are contained in the brain, so these are samples of the examples of the individual brain neurons. So then, so this uh, panel shows a silver stained horizontal section of the silk moss. So you can see the cell body, okay, cell body exists at the surface of the brain, and inside you can see a neuropile structures, okay, uh, where the synaptic contact exists. So when we reconstruct the three-dimensional structure of the neuropile structures, so we can see uh, such uh, module structures. So this, is, this one is called the antenna lobe, so where the olfactory discrimination processing is made. And this is a very famous mushroom body so where the memory and learning or the multimodal processing is made. So such uh, uh, module structures are contained in the brain, and the sensory signals are processed step by step through uh, such a module structures. So because uh, since the, the cell bodies of the uh, neurons exist at the surface of the brain, so when we use uh, uh, differential uh, interference contrast microscopes, so we can visualize the individual uh, cell bodies, okay, uh, as shown in this uh, movie. 
uh, you see that uh, so we so we can introduce a micro pipette uh, micro pipette to a target single cell for recording and staining so then so we can we can stain the cell individually so then we can stain the, uh, we can analyze the fine structure of individual neurons of course a double labeling or triple labeling is available for understand uh, for, for analyze the networks and uh, imaging techniques also we can we can we can we can use uh, for for checking the spatial temporal uh, activities in the insect brain. So using such a different level of the, the approaches, so we have collected lots of data and all the data uh, have been, oh, not going, <laughs> sorry, Some, something wrong. Oops. Oh. It's f completely f freezed. I, just, I released that, sorry. <laughs> J just a moment, please, uh, sorry. Could you please stop the time timer? <laughs> Is this possible? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm very sorry. So then, so we collected we collected the different level of the data, and we registered all the data to a neuron database. Okay, so this one shows the, the list of the individual brain neurons. Okay, as shown here. So then, so so far, so we have collected more than 1,500 neurons. Okay, so then, so such our information is now open for public uh, from a invertebrate brain platform. Uh, of the INCF uh, Japan node. So if you are interested in such a database, please visit the uh, exhibition uh, booth. This afternoon so we will have the demonstrations. Okay? Already yesterday we had the, the demonstration, today also we have. Okay? So then, so using, uh, using a, such a database, we analyze the neural pathways, pheromone processing pathways. Okay? So the pheromonal information received by the antenna is transmitted to the first order of practice center, the antenna lobe. The uh, basic structure and the function of this area is similar to a mammalian olfactory valve. Okay, so then through uh, several different synaptic areas in the higher olfactory centers, uh, finally the pheromonal information combines to a, a specific area in the brain the called the LAL or VPC. It's, uh, the, uh, it, it's, it is also called the premotor centers. So where the command signals 
uh, generated and descend from this area to the thoracic motor system to initiate the behaviors. Okay. So today I'm going to uh, show you the, uh, briefly the neural substrate of the, of the antenna lobe and the premotor centers. So now let's move the first order fractal centers. So, the, so this one shows the antenna of the, of the, of the silk moths, so which contains many long hairs. So in each hair has two, pair, uh, two uh, pheromone receptor cells. Uh, such a, a hair is called uh, uh, sensorium toricodium. Okay? So then one cell, one receptor cell is for the bombico stimulation, bombico, and the other one is about bombica, okay? So these cells do not respond to other uh, general orders. So these, uh, these cells are so-called a specialist type uh, receptor cells. And the genes of the uh, receptor proteins of the bombico and the bombica are already identified by my colleague. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Sakurai. Okay, so the information uh, is transmitted from so this receptor cell to a higher uh, to the first olfactory center, the antenna lobe, uh, through the antenna nerve. So, and this slide shows the propagation of the of a both sensitive dye response to electrical stimulation of the antenna lobe, so which contain uh, uh, axons of olfactory receptor cells. Okay, so you can see the information spread to the these areas. This area is called. Uh, uh, first of the olfactory center, the antenna lobe. Okay. So now, so this next slide. So this slide shows the uh, uh, sequential transversal section through the antenna now, antenna lobe. So you can see so many uh, glomerular structures. So this figure shows a, a three-dimensional reconstruction of the uh, glomerular structure. Uh, there are two different types of glomerulus. So one is a large one, so which is called a macro glomerular complex, MZC, which contains two compartments, cumulus and toroid. The others are very small ones. So these uh, small ones are called ordinary glomerulus. So in silk moths, there are about uh, 60 glomerulus, uh, ordinary glomerulus exist. And most of them are morphologically characterized. Okay? So now, so in order to investigate the projection site of the pheromone receptor cells, so GFP, green fluorescent uh, proteins, was significantly is expressed in the bombico and the bombical receptor neurons, respectively. So it, it was clarified the bombico major component information uh, project exclusively to these yellow field areas, a part of uh, this is the toroid area of the macrogram complex. The other minor component information project to these green areas, cumulus areas. So this pheromonal information never projected to these ordinary glomerular areas. So now, so in order to uh, understand the order representation in the antenna lobes, so we have characterized uh, many output neurons, so which has uh, dendritic categorizations in, uh, in each glomerulus. Okay? So this is a sample of the example of the, the output neurons which have a dendritic carbonization just in this macro glomerular complex. So this one has arborizations in the toroid, and so these are the, in the cumulus. So then so we also recorded the physio, uh, olfactory responses from these neurons. The other neurons, so these are the neuron, example of the neurons, so which are the dendritic carbonizations in the ordinary glomerulus, and all the glomerulus are already identified, okay? And we can get uh, such uh, olfactory responses. So now, so this slide, so the following two slides summarize a special temporal activity pattern in, uh, in the glomerular, uh, glomerulus, okay? So this uh, slide shows the special temporal activity pattern, MZC, uh, reconstructed from many MZC output neurons. So finally, it was clarified Bombico, the major film information is processed in these toroid areas and go up to the higher olfactory centers. So others, minor component is exclusively processed here and transmitted to higher olfactory centers. Okay? So now, so this slide shows the general order processing, special temporal activity pattern in the ordinary glomerular structures, uh, reconstructed from here the 75 ordinary glomerular processing output neurons. Okay? So then in response to a uh, different odorant, for example here the uh, hexeno, uh, linano, citra, they show such a uh, activity, special temporal activity patterns. So now, so in, depending on the different orders, you can see the different spatial temporal active patterns was observed. 
Uh, so we have applied a quantitative analysis of the temporal pattern of the, especially here, the ordinary output uh, neurons. And 75 uh, dimensional vectors are reduced to two dimensionally uh, by PCA. So then represented as such a trajectories. So in response to each uh, of fractal stimulations, you can see different trajectories and no overlapping was observed. So these uh, figures uh, shows uh, the uh, Euclidean distances uh, calculated from two trajectories, okay, uh, of olfactory uh, of different orders. So then here you see the differences between the hexanol and the linalol. Uh, you see during the olfactory simulation, the distance became larger, so then reduced. So that's the temporal pattern of the ensemble activity has the ability to encode all the quality uh, information in the antenna lobe, ordinary glomerular areas. So thus, in the antenna lobe, pheromonal information and general orders are separately processed and, at, and uh, transmitted to uh, higher olfactory centers and actually to uh, different areas in the higher olfactory centers. So then, uh, as, uh, as, uh, through several uh, synaptic areas, uh, pheromonal information converts to the premotor uh, centers, so these areas. So here the uh, uh, command signals is generated. So far, so we have already characterized the characteristic response patterns, which is called a flip-flopping activity pattern, which is very important for generating a zigzagging working. Okay, so now let's move to this premotor uh, the, the neural substrate of these areas. Okay, flip, this slide shows the flip-flopping activity pattern. So, the record, uh, so these activities are recorded between the brain and the thoracic ganglia. Uh, it's uh, called uh, connective, okay? The flip-flopping activity pattern is a state-dependent activity pattern. Uh, responses uh, completely depend on the uh, physiological activity just before the stimulation. The, in other words, when the background is in low state, firing late, so then the pulse pheromonal stimulation elicits the long-lasting excitatory responses. So by contrast, when the background activity is very high, in a high state, identical stimulation suppress the activities, and this state lasts until the next stimulation. Okay. So then when the recording is made simultaneously from the left and right connective, so we can see such antiphasic activity pattern. So this activity pattern is a characteristic of the response pattern is very similar to uh, electronic flip-flop. Okay, so which is a uh, uh, memory chip in uh, electronic uh, circuits. So in the, in the sigmoid brain, in response to pulse pheromonal stimulation, uh, such a one-bit memory like information is generated in the premotor center and uh, descend from the brain to the thoracic motor system to initiate the behavior. So now, so this slide uh, shows the, uh, the neurons neurons, so which uh, carry uh, such a characteristic flip-flopping activity pattern from the brain to the thoracic motor system. So these cells are called uh, descending cells, descending neurons, and the branching uh, dendritic arborizations are restricted to uh, these premotor areas. Uh, so there the post uh, it is estimated that such a characteristic response is generated in the premotor centers. Okay, so now what is the function? of the, such a uh, flip-flopping signal evo evolved in the behavior. So when the silk mode shows the zigzagging working, the head sideways movement is accompanied, and uh, the timing for change the working direction is completely synchronized to that of the head sideways movement. Okay? So the, the head side movement, of course, is controlled by a certain type of the, ne uh, type of the neck motor neurons. Uh, so the, the activity of the neck motor neuron, which uh, regulate the head side movement, uh, becomes a monitor for zigzagging working. So we have tried to identify the neck motor neuron, uh, which regulate the head side of movement. And also we have tried to make a double labeling of the neck motor neuron and descending neurons, which carry a command signals to the thoracic motor system. Okay, so then finally, so we found the distinct, dis, uh, flip, distinct cells, which show that flip-flopping activity pattern have a contact with uh, uh, neck motor neurons, and also the distinct neurons, which show the brief excitatory responses, also have a contact with uh, neck motor neurons. So these results indicate, uh, suggest that neck motor neuron will, control, will be controlled by two different command signals. So, so we try to get a simultaneous recording from the neck motor neuron and the flip-flopping neurons, okay? So this uh, uh, panel shows that the spike frequency, histogram, uh, record, uh, uh, spike frequency histogram of the neck 
motor neuron and flip-flopping neuron uh, in response to pheromones over many trials. So then you can see that the activities of the neck motor neuron uh, consist not only the flip-flopping but also brief excitatory responses. So these phys uh, morphological and physiological results indicate the neck motor neuron is controlled two different command signals. And similarly, uh, we, we, we speculate uh, Walking pattern is also controlled two different command signals. So we conclude here uh, that you, you, uh, the, uh, when the when the most shows uh, other social retention behavior, they show such a program sequence of behaviors. So these uh, uh, behaviors, walking patterns, are controlled by two different command signals. So now, so what are the neural substrate for generating the, such a free flopping activity patterns? I already ex explained that such activity is generated in the premotor centers. So we estimate there will be uh, 300 constituent neurons of the premotor centers. So we have comprehensively characterized uh, neurons okay, contained in, the, in this premotor center. So far, so we have collected more than 100 neurons. So some of them are the bilateral neurons, so which link the bilaterally the premotor centers. The other ones are local interneurons, so whose branching areas are restricted to restricted to these premotor centers. Okay. So now, so this slide shows the more de detail of the structure of the bilateral neuron. So and the premotor centers are composed of a four 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 compartments. Okay. So we we uh, we, uh, disc we explain that. Uh, represent uh, such uh, the premotor centers using four boxes, and we judge uh, and the input areas and up to the areas are judged from the morphology of the morphological characteristics of the individual neurons. The insect brain, the smooth areas are usually the input areas, and the brevi structure areas are usually the output areas. So we uh, fill out the input areas okay, with red and. Uh, uh, output areas with such a blue. Okay, so then we represent such a neurons using such a four boxes okay, here. So then so this is another example of the local interneuron. So they, they are represented as like this. So so we have analyzed so three-dimensional morphology and the physiology of over uh, 100 promoter, uh, promoter center neurons were analyzed. Okay, uh, analyzed in detail to present a uh, uh, reconstruction of the neural networks. So then we represent the network like this. So then uh, from these results, so we propose a functional neural network model for generating the uh, flip-flopping patterns. So we have characterized many bilateral neurons, which which have uh, uh, which are the gabonergic neurons, and also it appeared the feedback networks. In the, in the lo uh, uh, through the local uh, local interneurons here in this area, in these areas, and also so we found uh, uh, three pairs of uh, serotonergic cells. So then, uh, for generating the free flowing patterns, reciprocal inhibition is of course very important. So these activities uh, may be generated by uh, interact uh, by, by the inhibitory effect of the galvanic neurons. So the long-lasting citations should be generated by the net feedback networks or the effect of the serotonin. So such uh, uh, characteristic features are incorporated in a network model for generating the program sequence of the behaviors. So then we implemented this such a uh, uh, model to uh, insect size a mobile robot. And this robot has uh, real insect antennae as olfactory sensors. So we dissect the antenna, ante antenna from the head. So inside the electrode, in, uh, we insert the electrode to the base and tip. And the electroantenogram, so which represents uh, some of the antenna receptor potentials, was used. As, uh, used as the older input signals for, for to, to the to the net to the network. So then we uh, observe the behavior of the robot in the wind tunnel conditions. So then repeating the set and reset of the program sequence of behaviors until reaching the older source. So that, so they, so they, the robot could orient toward the older source. So that's the pro, even a program sequence of the behavior can support a complex task of order orientation by interaction with the uh, distributed status of the odorant in the air. So however, as I already explained to you, such a program sequence is modified by the internal state of the brain, uh, for example, by, uh, which is affected by circadian rhythm or memory and learning or other 
uh, multimodal sensory integrations. So now so I'm going, I will show you some example of the multi -mo uh, modification of the behaviors. So now this slide uh, shows the circadian variation of the behavior responses and the variation of serotonin in the brain. So as you can see, the circadian rhythm of the, of the behavior, it's uh, the, mm, the behavior, it's a red, it's a red line. Okay. And it's, uh, the other word, the sensitivity to pheromone is correlated with the serotonin content in the brain white line. So these results indicate the serotonin regulator pheromone sensitivity. So in order to investigate the effect of the serotonin in the antenna lobes, we apply the serotonin to the antenna lobe, so these areas, and observe the uh, behaviors. So then the dose response curves of the behavior are shifted to left. Uh, by the application of the serotonin to the antenna lobe, so indicate the sensitivity increased. Okay, of course, we have tried to use the uh, serotonin blockers, so by, by the application of the serotonin blockers, curves shift to the right. Okay? And also, so we have uh, tested the voltage sensitive dye imaging after the application of, the, of the, the serotonin to the antenna lobe, the intensity of the response, uh, to, uh, re response uh, significantly increased. So these re results confirm the importance of the serotonin in, control in controlling the sensitivity of pheromones. Okay, and we have already characterized all the types, all the five, uh, serotonergic cells in the antenna lobe, and this is a very unique cell, and which this cell is the only serotonergic cell in the antenna lobe. So this, it suggests, so this cell will regulate the sensitivity to pheromone. Okay, so now, uh, such a sensitivity to pheromone is also modified by habituation. So in the silk moths, the habituation is elicited by a 30 second exposure, uh, of, 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 of exposure to the pheromones. Okay? So then the, the curves, behavioral responses uh, after the habituation, the curves shift to the right, okay? like that. Uh, sensitivity decrease was occurred by the application of the 30 second uh, pheromone exposures. So, but the, the sen such a sensitivity decrease uh, lasted more than 90, 90 minutes, okay? So then the sensitivity decrease by habituation is recovered, uh, interestingly, by exposing a uh, uh, short path of the different orders. In this case, we use uh, linalol, this is uh, a leaf order, okay? So then the, after the uh, pheromone exposures, 30, 30 second pheromone exposures, okay? back to the normal levels. And the serotonin content in the brain is significantly decreased by habituation. So that's the sensitivity to pheromone is modified by the circadian rhythm, uh, habituation, and so on. And, then the, sens and the serotonin uh, may lead to such a modification of the behaviors. Uh, that means that maybe time to time, the sensitivity to pheromone is shifting during the order source orientation behavior. So now, so using uh, analysis and synthesis approaches, uh, synthesis approaches, so we can reconstruct uh, neural networks, static uh, neural networks. So however, however uh, this network is dynamically modified. For example, the sensitivity is dynamically change, shifting time to time. But so very hard to estimate such a dynamics in the networks. So we have uh, developed uh, another complementary approaches. So it's uh, the insect machine hybrid approach. So here we control the robot uh, by, the, uh, by neural activities recorded, by, rec recorded from the brain. Okay, so now let's move to the uh, insect machine hybrid system. So I, I've already explained to you that uh, such a behavior is controlled two, diff two command signals, the flip-flopping patterns and a brief excited responses. So, so these two command signals are converged to a neck motor neurons, okay? So we recorded from the neck motor neurons, okay? So then, so we use such, so the activities recorded from the neck, uh, neck motor neuron is used to control the robot, okay? So now, so suction pipette uh, was applied to left and right uh, neck motor neurons and recorded uh, such a uh, free flopping patterns and also including the uh, brief excitation and the free flopping patterns uh, from uh, and we use these activities to control the robot. Okay, so now I'm go uh, just I'm going to show the demonstration of the robot. 
So, you, so this activity is recorded from the neck motor neurons. The red one is from uh, right neck motor neurons, and the white one is from the left uh, neck motor neurons. So then, using such a signal, so we cha we use such a signal for controlling the uh, velocity and angular velocities of the robot. Okay, so then, uh, this uh, one trials. Okay, so this robot uh, shows uh, <coughs> such a behavior and could orient toward the other source. Uh, so far, more than 70% of the robot could orient toward the other source. Okay, so now that such orientation behavior is realized by the robot controlled by the command signals generated in the uh, most brain. So finally, so I would like to uh, introduce uh, one more very, very important technique to, uh, for understanding the neural systems. Okay, it's a, a genetic manipulation of sensors and neural networks. So maybe many, peop, many of you know very well about the channel road option. So it's a, a light-gated ion channel. So we succeed in expressing the channel road option onto a pheromone receptor cells, bombicol receptor cells. Okay? So then so we can switch on and off the activities of the pheromone receptor cells uh, instead of pheromones. So with a, high time resolution at the level of individual uh, spikes. Okay, so this one is a uh, result. Okay, so it's a control. Nothing happened in response to the light simulations. Okay, here, so this is a transgenic silk moss. So which shows uh, a normal uh, zigzag working patterns in response to light stimulation. Okay, uh, such a system is now available in the silk moss. So this uh, panel shows the uh, responses of the receptor cells uh, in response to light stimulations, uh, this of the cells show such activities, and increasing the stimulation intensity, the number of the spikes increased, and also the uh, the responses also increased in response to in increasing the stimulation free, uh, in intensity of the sti light stimulations. So that's the olfactory input to brain is precisely controlled uh, by a channel rule option two uh, expression system at the level of individual uh, spikes. So now today, uh, I showed you uh, uh, two different approaches uh, using uh, a model, Silkmos, Silkmos brain. Uh, and these two approaches are very important. So one is analysis and synthesis approach. Uh, the other one is uh, insect hybrid approach. And these approaches are complementary. So I hope so these approaches uh, will contribute to understand the neural base of the behavior, adaptive behaviors. And also I explained to you that Genetic manipulation of the network is very, very important. Now, such a genetic manipulation, especially using uh, uh, channel rose pushing to perturbate the networks. So then, so we can, uh, maybe it, it, it will also a uh, very important tool. Okay, so finally, so I would like to say that the, uh, such advances uh, will enable us to use the full potential of the features of insect brains as attractable. Uh, yet sophisticated model system for understanding the neural substrate of adaptive behaviors in relation to realistic and changing environmental conditions. So finally, so I would like to say thank you to my friends, uh, my intimate friends working together in this research, uh, Professor Ikeno and uh, Professor Kurabayashi and uh, Professor Nishikawa. So we are working very friendly <laughs> and uh, very so we have very strong uh, collaborations. And also, so we want to uh, thank uh, Neuroinformatics Japan and uh, NYGSC for supporting the, our database. Especially, I thank to uh, Professor Usui, thank you very much, uh, for supporting our uh, database. And also, I want to thank uh, develop the, the development on the next generation supercomputer project and uh, also the Mobilians project. Uh, supporting our uh, research, uh, our research, and the final ones. So we have three posters. So if you are interested in such a story, uh, please visit the uh, posters also. So the first one it's uh, about a large-scale realistic networks. More detail about how to make uh, large-scale networks in the silk moss brain. The other one. So this one is about a database. Okay, and the th third one is how to reconstruct the neural networks using a standard brain systems. Okay, and so if you are interested in such a story, please visit our posters again. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Kandaki. Uh, it's a great, beautiful integration from biology to neuroscience, even the robotics. 
Uh, we have a question and discussion. Yes. Thank you for that beautiful presentation. Yes. I have a couple of questions. One is, uh, perhaps you mentioned it and I missed, but what is the difference uh, between Bombicol and Bombical, and do both of those elicit this flip-flop behavior or are there mm -hmm. differences at that level? I see. So major components are Bombicol and the other ones are Bombicol, maybe, maybe you know very well. So in this case, just the Bombicol is sufficient to drive the behaviors. So usually when we apply the Bombicol, you know, the dose response curve is shifted to the right, so it means that inhibitory effect is maybe occurred by the, by, by the application of the Bombicol. But we don't know very well about the function of the Bombicol still. But in the behavioral levels, the, the dose response curve shifted to the right means a de de uh, decrease of the, sen the sensitivity. Yeah. Okay. My other question is about uh, your uh, interesting database and the question of whether uh, it will be feasible in the near future to uh, essentially translate across different insect species. Are the 1,500 neurons that you have, do you have any idea how many of those would be very similar in a fly or a bee or some other completely different uh, species? Yes, so, so far, you know, you know just in the, the silk moths and the Drosophila, so there are many kinds of identified new ones are reported. So there are very similarities we, we know very well. So maybe in the future, so maybe we can much more detail, you know, analysis we can make. So using such a database. So in a database, in vertebrate brain database, you know, so we, uh, we have, it, the main purpose is a, compar uh, it's a compare the new, uh, structure and the function of different species. Uh, so in the future, we would like to compare the, these. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for a very, very nice talk and very interesting approach. Uh, and now, <clears throat> with the zigzag coordination that you showed the neurons for, in order to have a zigzag, you would, would need to have a certain activity on one side and certain activity on the other side. So you would need to have some mechanism for generating the, the alternation, not just the reciprocal yeah. inhibition. Are you, have you looked at the membrane properties, etc.? So you have now, so we are, we are trying, yeah. but still we don't have uh, enough data. So yeah. It's our ongoing work. Uh, we hope we'd like to have uh, like channel properties, uh, other properties. We're now mm. to have. It's our ongoing work. Not not yet. We have. And and the premotor center that you discuss does that that contain both interneurons and command neurons, whereas the motor neurons are further down. I suppose that's the case. Is it? So, sorry, more no, new ones the premotor center yeah. that you, you uh, discussed, mm -hmm. does that contain the CPGs and, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the different CPGs mm -hmm. projecting them down to the uh, ganglion where you have the motor mm -hmm. neurons, is that it? Yeah, maybe the, the basic system is like a half-center model, I think. Uh, maybe it's a basic system, very similar to our oscillatory systems, I think. But not n now, so we're analyzing the systems using uh, such uh, networks. Yeah, sorry, we don't know very well now. And, and finally, the hybrid experiments. How I, I mean, that's very elegant and, and it's fun to look at, but can you tell where, where do you feel that the hybrid experiments have been critical for an understanding of the biology? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but, 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 so, uh, no, uh, the hybrid experiments yeah. are spectacular to look at because you can sort of record the activity yes. and, and confirm that you have the zigzag behavior yes. and so forth. Right. And um, do you think that the hybrid experiments were required to understand the behavior? Sure. Or, okay. uh, of, of course, so we are now doing. And also, the, you know, yeah. you know, the uh, feedback system, a you know, closed loop system is very important to understanding uh, such adaptive mm -hmm. systems. So we need a real time processing we need. Yeah. So if we see such a, you know, responses, we need uh, such a closed loop systems. And the hybrid system is very, very important for, mm. for uh, like a closed loop, si as a closed loop okay. system. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, please. 
田中先生ちょっと待ってください。Uh, do, you, do you observe opponency that is、uh, left right uh, uh, inhibition of the opposing side in order to achieve the, the zigzag motion?、Yeah. So, stereo sensing where you have a comparative、uh-huh. uh, response? Yeah. So, at the beginning, you know, the, 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 you know, in response to simulations, okay, they showed the, at the first time they showed a straight line walking. I just briefly explained, but then at that, when we give a simulation to the right side, right, right antennae, they start to st-、uh, show a straight line to the right side. Uh-huh. Okay, the other, other side, the right, left ones, and the combinations. You know, if you give a stimulation to both sides, they show the three lines. So maybe it depends on the, the concentration, the timings of the, the stimulation to the antenna, the angle it changed. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. The, the behavior、uh, is composed of three phases one is straight, zigzag, and loop.、Uh, You showed in the early part of your、uh, presentation, you showed that some cut of the body、uh, made uh, uh, the red line on this straight. Yeah, hi, yes. But、uh, later, you didn't explain, the, as far as I, catch the, I could catch,、uh, you didn't explain the mechanism of the switching.、Mm-hmm. Have, you, have you switching between straight and、uh-huh. straight zigzag and loop?、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't know anything about that,、uh, still, we don't know very well about in the thra- thoracic ganglia. So, it is clear that such a two command signal descend to the, the thoracic motor systems, but we don't know very well about how to con- the re-、uh, walking pattern is controlled by two command signals. So, we use the neck motor neurons activity as a monitor of the zigzagging walking so far. <coughs> so, in the neck motor systems, clearly controlled by two command signals. So, We think the same things happened in the thoracic motor system, but we don't know very well, still, we don't know very well the, how the, the thoracic motor system is you know, moderated by the command, two command signals. So we don't know very well about the switching in the thoracic、so、motor system. The, the、uh, descending signal is identical, but identical,、uh, yes. the,、uh, the, uh, the motor area. Motor centers,、uh, motor ganglia,、uh, situation motor ganglia is different than the uh, uh, different types of uh, motions. Are so maybe we think so, but still we don't know very well. So maybe in the near future we'd like to do the experiment. So actually, so we are now getting activities from the neck motor neurons. It's a, it's, so we estimate the neck motor neurons activity as a steering, steering behavior. Is there any more questions? Yeah, thank you for a very beautiful presentation. So,、uh, for your analysis of the premotor network, you measure the、uh, dendritic and the axonal arbors of 100 neurons. And from those、uh, morphology to network, did you、uh, measure the actual、uh, synaptic strengths physiologically、mm-hmm. or anatomically, or you estimated from the overlap? Yeah. So, it's、uh, our next step of the work. It's our ongoing work. So, we are now making a standard brain. So, we use、uh, rigid and non rigid formation. So, we made a, st- a standard brain. So, we have lots of individual neurons you know, identified. So, we combine all the th- things in the standard brain. We estimate the synaptic contact using such a standard brain techniques. And also, so we have a more detailed story on the poster presentation. You know. Yeah. Okay, so, and、uh, one more question. So, I'm very interested in the role of serotonin in this、yeah. uh, pheromone uh, uh, chemotaxis. So,、yeah. uh, you talked about the correlation with the psych- circadian rhythm,、yeah. but is the serotonin also、uh, modulated by some other factors like sexual desire? So, we desire have tested the content of the other biomagic amines, but we just we got the, such a difference in the, in the serotonin.、Mm-hmm. So, maybe, of course, there's a possibility, you know, other, you know, Amines or other transmitters related to the, such as circadian or sensitivity to pheromones. But so far, we know that serotonin is clearly related to such a sensitivity differences.、Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Any more questions?、Uh, is there any young scientist who h a v e a question? Okay, so、uh, although he got、uh, stuck、uh, five minutes or so by PowerPoint, he completed exact time. Thanks again. Thank you very much.